All right, Prashant, thank you so much for volunteering or agreeing to be a testimonial. I know that we just wrapped up our coaching sessions together and you landed a dream job. So I'm super excited to share your, have you share your journey with everyone. Um, that all being said, do you mind just introducing yourself and your professional background? Sure, so my name is Prashant and I actually come from a industry that is all healthcare. So my first, uh, job you know was not in healthcare so it was a transition i worked at a small startup uh, that did a lot of uh, media kind of um you know uh, jobs um and then my transition into healthcare happened around uh, 2010 uh, and since then i've been um you know working at a mass general hospital which uh, was my dream job at the time you know it was uh, one of the best hospitals in the world so mm -hmm. i learned a lot um, and then in 2015, we decided to move to New Jersey from Massachusetts um, because, you know, we figured there would be family around and, and the kids. Uh, we just had a, had a son at the time. So, you know, it would be easy for him to kind of grow up with family. So we moved to New Jersey. And, uh, you know, so from that point on, I kind of went into this career mode of looking for the right fit. Um, and you know, because of the pressure of moving and then having a, a child, you know, my thought process was just to get a job. Um, so I kind of took, um, took a job that, you know, I was not thrilled about. Mm -hmm. and then, um, six months into that job, I got offered a job that I actually had interviewed, you know, while this whole move was happening. So I uh, switched over to that role. Mm -hmm. From then on, you know, it's just been kind of finding myself. Mm -hmm. um, you know, do I like being at the hospitals or do I like doing something else? And, um, you know, unfortunately, in February of this year, I was uh, laid off. Um, and so that was a real eye opener. You know, I, I took that as an opportunity then to kind of reconfigure my thought process and, and come to you for mm -hmm. advice as to what I can do to, you know, land that dream job that I wanted. Yeah. Okay. So <laughs> yeah, you've been on quite the journey. So remind me, like how many jobs have you had in the past three years? So in the past three years, so since I moved in 2015, I had had that job for five years. Mm -hmm. um, I was well on my way to being manager there and moving up the uh, ranks. But um, since I moved to New Jersey, I've had three, three jobs at mm -hmm. uh, three companies. So Okay. Okay. So we're really looking for stability in our la in this next job. Yeah. And, and I actually, you know, I enjoy and I do my best work when I know that there is a, a chance to develop into that role. You know, these transitions, while they're great and, and you know, you learn a lot and you meet mm -hmm. a lot of cool people, um, you know, you still want that kind of place where you could say that, oh, you know, I, I, I really moved up there and I, I did what I needed to do to make things happen there. Yeah, definitely. Um, and I know that from speaking with you, we kind of went through exploration and teamwork is so important for you and culture is so important. And so I actually want to talk about this because I know that through our sessions together, you ended up getting three offers <laughs> from three different companies, which is amazing. And I just want to like acknowledge you because you didn't go for like the highest paying offer. Like right. that wasn't the, that wasn't the driving factor. Like you knew so well that it had to be about culture. It had to be about team. So if you could, I'd love to just kind of hear um, a little bit about your journey and this coaching program together and what you found the most helpful. Sure. So I think that, you know, like you mentioned, it's um, ultimately it was about just looking at everything and, and kind of making a decision of where the happiness will come from. Um, you know, some people like the, the monetary aspects of things. Some people like, you know, the, the titles and, and mm -hmm. that's, but for me, what motivates me is, is being on a team and, and learning and, and just kind of having that diverse thought. You know, like you, you don't get pigeonholed into this one role and then that's your role. You know, you mm -hmm. kind of have to pick up slack where you can't, where you need to. And, and, you know, I like the tight knit, like, you know, we, um, for a, a $3 billion budget, you know, um, we were six people. 
<laughs> you know, and, and that kind of creates this bond of like, you know, you have to know what the other person does as well. To yeah. See what your role is. And that, that kind of has a um, certain value in my mind. And, and so that was very important. So the most important thing I would say is the modules that you have had laid out in the, in the HHF. Uh, kind mm -hmm. of, that's, the, that's the key because, you know, I took time. I, I kind of went and, you know, just started thinking about like, oh, you know, I, I have done these things well in the past. Mm -hmm. are the things that kind of motivate me and then you know that became very clear and yeah where it helped is like you know actually doing the modules helped but it kind of made me feel like when the companies that I interview with ask you know so tell me about yourself you know it helped answer that question mm -hmm. and made a really good impression on them because I came in with a very clear vision of what I wanted to say versus fumbling around and trying to figure out at the time of the interview, hey, you know, like I want to hit on this point, this point, like that message was clearly ingrained from the modules. Yeah, awesome. Okay, because you clearly killed all of your interviews to get three offers in the very end. <laughs> it, was, it was an interesting process because like I told you, you know, before then I had a few phone conversations and, um, you know, while they like my background, they didn't necessarily hear the, the impact statement, you know, like mm -hmm. that's, that's the difference. And I, I would yeah. say that for anyone that is not like, you know, um, sure about this, that's where the coaching helps the most is, is yeah. that, you know, you kind of get yourself reconfigured and you have this module that helps you kind of walk through, you know, and in a very logical manner, I would say, you mm -hmm. know, tells you like, you know, what, what is it that you like? What are your strengths? You know, and, and all those questions start getting kind of clear in your head. And then that, that, that clarity is what helps you get through the process. Definitely. Yeah. I always say like, if you're not clear and you can't connect your own dots, like nobody else can do that for you. Um, so that's just so amazing. But I think what's even more amazing is that you ended up getting an offer for a department that you had no business being in, <laughs> meaning like you've never had experience with it and in an industry that you had never had experience right. with. So I really want to talk about this because I have so many people who come to me saying that a career transition is impossible. Like right. they had been trying for some time. Um, they can't get a single interview. So I want to just ask like, how did, like, what did you find most helpful to be able to position yourself not only for the interview but to get the offer yeah so I think that you know a lot of times you know what we do is we kind of start doubting ourselves you know so it's that oh you know I've never done this before but the the key thing is that if you just take a step back and look at your previous jobs I'm sure that there is something that you've done that's related mm -hmm. and you jump on these projects you know at the time it just feels like oh why am I getting all these projects but if you look back, you've done some of the elements that, you know, when you're transitioning into a new industry, you can pick up on, you know, you, you always have the interpersonal stuff. Like, you know, you have like these common things that every job requires. So the, the, the industry that you're speaking of is from healthcare to financial services um, and doing not finance, but data analysis, right? Mm -hmm. So for me, like, you know, they're both very heavily regulated. So that was a very big thing, you know, they, they mm -hmm. are built on integrity, trust, you know, you, you have to have those layers to kind of, so I, I was just able to kind of make those parallels and say that, you know, while I don't have the experience, I know that this industry is heavily regulated. So I have experience working in a very heavily regulated industry. And as far as finance to data analysis, like, you know, I do the numbers all the time. So it's not that difficult. Like the concepts are all still the same. It's just, there's a dollar sign missing instead of that. It's more marketing numbers. And, you know, we're doing different kind of metrics that will, you know, show what the key performance indicators are. So all of that, you know, still stays the same. So I was just able to kind of make it very simple in my head and say, I've done this before. I can easily translate those skills mm -hmm. into it. And, you know, talking to the group and having those group calls, uh, where, you know, we would ask you questions and, and you would like kind of allay our fears about like, hey, you know what, you've done this in the past. Yeah. Just back to a time, you know, and, and that helped. That was awesome. 
but what I'm hearing a lot is like just being clear and concise and just feeling really confident going into there. Like I don't have things that are lacking actually, like here's the value that I bring. Um, ugh, I just love that. Um, so can you share Prashant, like what did you ultimately walk away fr with from like February until, I mean, I know you're starting a job this Monday, but like um, talk to me about like everything that you gained, whether it's like tangible or intangible just through sure. this journey. Sure. So, I, I, you know, the one thing that when I first started talking to you, you know, my big thing was that, oh, you know, I, I just am afraid to, to, of failure. Mm -hmm. um, so the one thing that I kind of took away from the program is that if you don't take the risk, then there is not that reward that you're going to be looking for, right? Like you're always going to be the person that does not say yes to things. And, and, and so there might be opportunities that you might be missing. Mm -hmm. um, and being proactive you know that was the other thing is like in my last job um you know i was not proactive enough to kind of anticipate what where things were headed i i was just happy with the fact that i had a half a mile commute from home you know and, and that was like the primary driver of everything and i'm like you know this gives me great work-life balance and and all of that but then you know you miss on some of the signs that you know maybe this is not headed where you want it to go mm -hmm. so being proactive and not waiting till the last minute to kind of be being laid off but you know building your network and while you have a job even then you know looking at opportunities and, and involving yourself with people that might make your next career transition a lot easier yeah so that was a, a big thing that you know from talking to you and and just being in the program like you know mm -hmm. constantly saying that you know be on linkedin you know put some thought 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 um articles out there and 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 keep yourself like kind of visible to people and then that that is something that i plan on continuing to do awesome i love it now in terms of tangible do you mind sharing what you feel comfortable with in terms of the new opportunity sure so uh you know so as you mentioned earlier you know this was not the most highest paid job right but what it was is a chance to kind of prove myself, right? So what they said is, we'll bring you in at your current salary, but in six months, we're going to give you a raise. Mm -hmm. um, and if I am honest with you, last year when I was at my job, I didn't have a review. Like I didn't get any of those things. And I was just kind of, you know, going with the flow. Like here, it's more that, you know, they're giving me a chance right off the bat within six months, not even waiting for a yearly review. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, pay, you know, and, and yeah. because they want to kind of do the right thing, you know, they, they also are aware that this was not the highest offer. And, mm -hmm. me, you know, the role just seemed so interesting, you know, yeah. and, and like the part of the, you know, so the tangible thing is that obviously, like, you know, it's going to be a much more higher paid job. Mm -hmm. um, it's going to be that tight knit group of people that I mentioned, you know, we're a small team and um, you know, it, it's, it's, it's kind of the job that I had always envisioned, you know, like mm -hmm. the strategic aspects of the business plus the financial. So it just blends those two together. And uh, within the next year or a little bit over, there's a chance of a promotion. Mm -hmm. So a lot of those like, you know, things that we spoke about where, you know, there is, there is that happiness that you can create. Mm -hmm. um, that's, that's what it feels like. That's awesome. Yeah, because I know growth and culture are so important to you. And you really, like, I know you mentioned earlier that um, for the past three years, you know, you kind of took the wrong positions. But this time, I have, like, I'm just planting the seed right now that I have a really strong faith that this is the one because, again, it wasn't like just based off of money. You could have had that with the other two offers, right. but you really chose um, consciously based on. Um, the way that you felt during the interview process and just right. what you were taking in. So that's right. awesome. And, and I mean, even um, for more tangible results, right? Even in the offers that I declined, I was able to negotiate and uh, mm -hmm. you know, the initial offer came in at a certain number and I was able to get, you know, up, up to 15,000 more. Wow, that's that great. Was not the, that was not what was going to sell me on mm -hmm. any of the roles. You know, I, I, like you and I had spoken about it and yeah. We had a, a set set list of these things, and that's that's the other thing. You know, I think that when we think of you know these things, right? Like as a human, like it's easier to just take the biggest offer. 
Mm-hmm. When I was to you and and you know going through that list, I, I was able to easily say that money is not the most important to me, and that's yeah. where you know uh, uh, there's value in having a career coach because mm-hmm. you know you could take a lot of money and be very unhappy in your role, and then yeah. you're back to square one. So that's right. Uh, that's where I think you helped a lot as well. Thank you. Um, but I give all the credit to you. And by the way, I know the money will come because you're just going to thrive in your current role. You're going to have so much more energy. And if not like directly from the, the first six months, like in other ways, you're going to just like start to attract windfalls in ways that right. are at least expected because your That's energy is so good. About too, you know, it's just, just that the positive energy attracts that to you, you know, and like, that's the thing that we speak about all the time is like, if you're positive and, you know, people notice that, then they'll come to you for things, you know, and then that's, uh, that's the mindset that uh, you can help create. So. Definitely. So um, final question or two more. Um, one is, I'm curious if anybody were on the fence, like they're thinking, oh, should I work with Emily? Should I not work with Emily? I don't know what I'm getting myself into. Like, what could you say to them? I would say that you have to at least give yourself a chance to Mm. get to know you because I think, um, you know, when, you know, reading reviews online and, and, and all of those things, you know, help in certain ways, but that first call, you know, when, when I had that first call with you is when I knew that, you know, you're the right person that I would (laughs) want to work with, you know, you took the time to understand the situation and it was not a very, um, sales heavy pitch you know it was very like you tell me about yourself Mm -hmm. we find that you're compatible with each other then we'll go forward and and I will tell you which program you know it was not like you were telling me that oh yeah this is the program for you just 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 do this yeah Uh, you know you you took the time to understand what I wanted and then I was able to at least talk to you and see like you know if like your personality will match mine Mm -hmm. And, and I think that you know after talking to you and having that the the group calls like uh it's the best decision I made and I, I think that you know anybody on the fence should at least give you that 45 minutes to just get to talk to them and and then you know you can allay their fears because I think a lot of this um market you know is saturated with people mm-hmm. that just want the quick like you know sales pitch and if you don't do this like you know you won't get that like you know yeah. not how it was at all it was mm-hmm. very like, uh, you know, just, just tell me what your current problems are and then we can, you know, make those problems into opportunities. And that's, that's where I think your value is. That's, oh. that's the thing it's about. Thank you, Prashant. And I think that um, it is really a partnership and it really is a relationship right. because you're opening up about so many things that we right. don't necessarily feel comfortable sharing with um, even people work. we know. <laughs> right. And they're not all work related, right? Like right. These blogs that are cultural, there is like mm-hmm. you know, personal life, there's so many things and right. um, you want somebody that understands and takes that into account, you know? Yeah. And And actually, I want to say, like, those are the bigger blocks. Like, everybody comes to me and they think it's, like, something's wrong with their resume. I'm like, no, it's more internal. (laughs) Like, we need to tackle the internal. Um, It's not just one document. (laughs) Yes, exactly. So, last question. Um, Any final thoughts or, um, yeah, just any thoughts you want to share before we end this? Yeah, I mean, you know, um, the one thing that I will tell anybody that would like to join the program is that, you know, Again, it's not like once the program is done, you know, you're, you're basically left to the side and mm-hmm. you're planning for yourself. You know, you and I talk all the time, like if there's anything that you need, you know, you, you're you there, you know, you are you have your Slack, you have, you have other groups that, you know, once you graduate from the program, you get into the other group. So yeah. there is a lot of support and there are a lot of people that are in the same position as you. So having those group calls, like kind of just helps a lot of people and it's, at the end of the day, it's, it's, you become more of a community, which is what I feel, you know, and, and there's so much sharing and, you know, so much uh, shared knowledge that, you know, and it's not just from coming from you. It's, it's, you know, the other people that are also involved mm-hmm. in the program have a lot of thoughts and, and to hear them sometimes also is very refreshing. Yeah. It helps out a lot. So uh, that, that would be my, my biggest thing is that, you know, it's just a very, very nice community of, uh, very good people.
Yeah, I would, I, I had, I don't know what I'm doing, but I seem to attract like really, like, I'm just so proud of everybody that is in the program because everybody brings so much value. And, right. you know, there's people from like entry level all the way to senior level, such as yourself. And right. there's just so much awesome feedback that is shared, but I love that community aspect as well, because I know hearing from other people, like what you're going through and just hearing somebody vocalize it, you're like, wow, I'm not alone in this. Like exactly. I wow, like that was really well put. Like I couldn't have said it better. And that's so super refreshing, but also just helpful in this process. I think that also comes from what we spoke about is having the, the initial call and, and, you know, having the synergies mm -hmm. work with that person, you know, because I think that, you know, you, you kind of uh, need a certain type of personality. And, and I think yeah. that, you know, you, you can work with anyone, I'm sure, but you know, I actually don't offer. Okay, so you helped me answer this question because I was like, why do I attract certain people? It's because I don't offer my coaching to everybody. Like, it has to be a good fit. So, exactly. and I think that, yeah. that means a lot. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you so much, Prashant. Congratulations again. I'm super excited for your Monday start, and you'll have to send me a picture. Sounds great. I will definitely do that. <laughs> awesome. I promise. <laughs> Great. Thank you. All right, thank you, Emily. Have a good one.